our feelings and emotions are being guided by principles, concepts, ideas that we are not even aware of. Most of them have been implanted by fear, has been implanted by environmental cues and being closed in. Most of us can't even feel a think straight. So we got to come, come to some realizations right now on why it's happening. See, it hap it's happening, it happening. It's always what we talk about the most, but the why behind it is very simple. This world is a program. You see, and it's kind of interesting because I notice people with animals. And if you ever watch animals when they're enclosed inside of an, in an artificial environment, mm -hmm. they act a certain way. If the humans would get out of the animal kingdom, the animals would be all right. But since humans are always constantly keeping this brittle on this animal kingdom, animals start acting out of place, doing stuff they normally wouldn't do to each other. Because, you know, most animals of the same species never attack each other. Oh, did you peep me? Did you catch me? Did you catch me? Yes. Most animals over a certain period of time will stop attacking each other in a certain species. There will be some type of compromise, something to happen. But species of the same type need, usually don't kill each other. Very few animals in the animal kingdom kill each other. And then you got some animals that eat other, the really offspring and things. But very, but in a natural environment, you barely see it. Mo in a natural space where those animals can move, those animals usually just keep re what reproducing and they never eat off their offspring. It's environmental activities and behaviors that cause unnatural behaviors. Now, here's something very unnatural. When you have a whole masses of people constantly viewing someone getting murdered, on a television screen and a movie screen. And you already have, yes sir, a environment of competition being created by the economy. Then the view and the interaction with the economy is already limited. With all types of practices and all forms of crime being taught to us in the environment, with the movies industry pumping the videos and the visuals back to you. You can go back as far as 5,000 years if you go to Mexico and you can see the gigantic heads, big as this building, and you can look at them, you go, he looked like Joe around the corner. Yeah. Those are statues of us. But since we don't travel and we don't read, we can't find ourselves in history because they basically don't put us in history. You have to get certain people's writings in order to see those pictures or in order to uh, understand them. But you really need to travel to Mexico yourself and see for yourself. We were here and they talk about Columbus. We're, Columbus wasn't even a twinkle in his dad or mother's eyes 5,000 years ago. And we have a tendency to talk about Africa on the other side and negate Africa here because when this European came here, we were here. They called us Indians, and people will go, well, when they look at people like me, they go, Indian? They don't mean you. Yes, they do. What do you call the people from Haiti? West Indians. But then we forget that. We don't understand that. We want to look for an Indian who looks like a person who comes from India, the country. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to see that. They called us all Indians to help confuse us. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's right. No, no sorry. Let it out. That's what it is. We need our elders. We need our elder mothers and fathers and the babas to come out and give that knowledge to the people. Because it's time. Because we need the blessing. Because the younger generation, there are some of us in the younger generations who do see the revelation, who do see the prophecy, who know that it's time to be responsible and accept our divine, our divine guardianship and love and power. So the children need to know it. And there's always, like I say in a lot of my, my, my gatherings when we come together, that the conversation is between the oldest person in the room and the youngest person in the room. Those two people always seem to get along. Grandpa and grandson and granddaughter, grandma and granddaughters and grandsons get together fine. Everybody in the middle got problems. 
the person who are going into the ancestor, the person closest to the ancestral realm, and those who just came out of the womb are the closest people in the room. The people in the middle got problems because everybody want to live out their ego. See, that's what the early manhood and early womanhood is about. Everybody, survival, children, and, and fulfilling their dream. And not realizing that there's a common dream, that we're all dreaming a common dream, especially when you're part of a similar tribe, similar bloodline, and similar condition. So we need that blessing, especially for what happened to us. So many people say, oh, why are you dealing with that black stuff? We need to hear our elders give that blessing because something's missing. Everybody wants to know, what's the issue with the crime? Why don't young people get themselves together? Someone kept something from them. Because if you knew how much you were worth, you wouldn't act, we wouldn't, as a people, some of us, especially in my generation, wouldn't act the way we act. But since, you know, it's easy to call myself a dog, damn. They took us from being gods to dogs. So brothers are walking around backwards, and that's why our pants is hanging off our back. Because you be at, you know, you've been trained into being a dog instead of being God. And if I say peace, God, then you you know it's like wow, I'm, I'm, I can feel that. But if I say what's up, dog? Well, if I say peace, God, you're like, what are you talking about? And if I say what's up, dog? You like. That sounds good to you. That sounds normal. That's abnormal. Because what if I walked in a room and called a bunch of brothers a bunch of sons of bitches? Then everybody be looking at me like, why are you cussing? But you just said, what's up, dog? See, we messed up. So this transformation of consciousness that's happening in this era must go on and be passed down between those who are older to those who are younger. And it has to be sincere. It has to be straightforward and pure. No more beating around the bushes. No, I'm trying to appease this. It has to be natural. We got to do it. There's no, no questions about it. The children are dependent on it. The future is dependent on it. Peace and blessings. Come on in. Today's topic, and I want this to go on so people can see it. Astro theology and earth changes moving towards the new earth and natural governance. Okay? The scriptures that we're looking in, because we recognize all of our ancestral, ancestral scriptures as, as they're being used and taught in reference to enlightenment, not in trying to proselytize any religion to anybody, but to see the spiritual aspect of, of our ancestors in it. Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 21, and linked to the fivefold government, fivefold economy. Job 5, okay, that's in the New Testament, also known as the Injil in Arabic. The New Testament, which is the teachings, quote unquote, of the person and the script, <laughs> the character and the script of Yahshua, Amashiach, Jesus the Christ, to some. Also known in the iconography, in the iconography, as Haru. Job five, dealing with the promise of overcoming famine. Interesting uh, scriptures that people barely go over. I notice I've been listening for them, and they barely ever mention them. And the Holy Quran, which is the last testament or the last revelation given in the religious world amongst the monotheistic groups which is also descended out of ancient Africa by way of Prophet Muhammad, descendant of the Prophet Ibrahim, descendant of the bloodline of Egypt, Mitzrayim, the ancient Kemetan people, by way of Hagar. Yes, let's get the bloodline. Oh, they don't want to talk about the bloodlines? I will, because it's a blood right. <laughs> Some people say it's a blood right. Well, I'm going to show that it's a blood right. From Prophet Muhammad, Walayah Salam, and the Holy Quran, last revelation, Descended of the ancient Egyptians by way of the Ishmaelites, descendant of Hagar, the black African matriarch of the Ishmaeli, Korish, tribe of Korish, in Arabia and North Africa, also in Ethiopia, Abyssinia. We're going into chapter, uh, in the Quran, chapter 7, verses 9 through 10, also Holy Quran, chapter 16. 
verses, uh, excuse me, chapter 16, verse 12. Is that Job 5? That's Job 5. We're going to go there also. So I'm going to take a break and uh, give some compassion to my temple, and I'll be right back. Hey, good afternoon. Zakia Ali here at Black and Nobel, preparing little sea champ rolls for the congregation that has uh, convened for Brother Levi's lecture today. So come stop by and see me and get a little sea champ roll. All right, thank you so much and have a great day. Astrotheology is going, is going into the connection between the cosmos, the star systems that we live under and with and in, and the actual belief systems, Theo, Theos, Deos, meaning creator or God, meaning really God or guidance. Peace and blessings, brother. Come on in, please. Make yourself comfortable. Right here. It's a good chair right here. I have other chairs too. I can move it back for you. Theology, or Dios, or Deos, it means God, but if you break down the concept of what God is, right, noun as well as adverb, or verb, Dios, Dios, God, or guidance, or forces, which also is connected to Dios, again, on another level, theorems. The theories that you live by become the guidance of your life. The theories that you live by, be, live by becomes the guide, God. Remember, we deal with etymology here. Guide, which is also connected to God. Deal with the phonology. Over your life, your belief systems becomes the principles that create your existence. So astro dealing with the influence of star systems in connection to our belief systems and actions and study. Are we clear? Are we clear? Good. Making sure you can always ask questions. There's, this is not, this is not, no, no inquisition, no inquisition. <laughs> That's the code. When we say no inquisition, that means people are free to express themselves, their beliefs, their feelings without being attacked. Because that's what's causing the sickness. Everyone's put in a state of fear. That's why knowledge, people are not learning and loving and healing. Because we're in fear. Fear has to go. The only thing that needs to be feared is the creator. And that's not even fear. That's called admiration and respect. But they say that's the real meaning behind the holy fear. Kassad. And what we call the Canaanite Hebrew language. Earth changes. Because a lot of this astral theology is deeply present in the book of Revelation. The book of Apocalypse. The word apocalypse does not mean destruction. The word apocalypse means revelation through time. Epoch. Okay. Earth changes. So we're going to go into earth changes. Moving towards a new earth. Because as you as we start to as the planet and the, the planets and the star systems go into new alignments, there is a new biochemistry being produced and created. That new biochemistry also has to have a change in thought patterns. Because just as the body changes, so does the consciousness that inhabit the body changes. Just as the, the mind, consciousness, intelligence of the spirit shifts, so does the body shift. You can't go up into higher levels of thought and think you're going to have the same body. You can't. You can't go into solar, you know, you're going to go into solar concepts and study the ancient Nubians. And you're stuck there studying the ancient Nubians, but you're not living in the mind state and practices of a Nubian which is moving and linked to the motions of the stars, the sun, and the moon. That's our ancestors. That's our practice. Bless it. Okay? Are we clear? We want, to, we want to eat a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet or a good diet, right? 
But what is your diet connected to? Your diet is connected to nature. So if your diet is connected to nature, right, then you have to be connected to nature. The reason why we're having the health problems we're having is basically we are not interacting with the elements. Your body is composed of five major elements. Earth, wind, water, right, air, and of course, the fifth one, which is the fifth element, is ether, which is the spirit plane, which is also the prana, which is also the life force, also known as the tachyon, also known as the ruach kudus, the holy spirit, known as the nax, nafish, which is the holy breath, the soul, the ra, ru. Okay? And with that being said, if the air you breathe is full of toxins, can your cells reboot themselves? No, because it's not getting the fire to ignite the cells into high gear to keep the body in motion, to keep the temple up, because your cells is the actual building blocks of your what? Your body, your skin cells is, the, is building blocks and your skin is an organ. If the air you're breathing is constantly polluted and toxic, then your cells can't get the fire it takes to what? Reproduce. If the water that you drink is polluted, then your cells being 80 per, 75 to 80% water can't flush itself out, so therefore the cells can't what? Properly reproduce. If the land is polluted, then the minerals that you need is stripped, and the, and the minerals are stripped from the soil, which we're going to find out today. Then the food you eat will never be able to produce enough electromagnetic spin for your cells to reproduce to keep the minerals and solids in check. Thus your cells can't even make an electron spin because it doesn't have enough iron. And when not enough iron, you get anemia. And anemia causes the what? The breakdown of the blood. And black women have some of the largest, some of the highest concentrations of anemia problems in their blood system. Due to the environment they live in, they don't get enough green vegetables. And men, men is primary too. Because that's dealing with sperm production. And at this, in, in sperm, we have something called what? Come on, brothers. We need to know this. Zinc. Iron and zinc, which is, which is what your prostate needs. And that comes from what, Mama Zakia? Iron comes from leafy green vegetables, dried fruit, raisins, corn. It is. And how, much of, how, and how much of that are we eating as a people? Meat, it cannot suck. You can't put dead things in the body and expect for life to come out. You want to know why there's so much violence? Because most of the food we eat is based around violence. You beat the damn cow over the head and ate it. And then hit it with hormones. Hormones. And you want to know why they so what? Horny. <laughs> it's right there. Why she so damn big? You thinking that's her natural size. No, it's not. Not based on anything in the environment. It ain't like she ate the actual cow straight forward. It ain't like somebody put the cow in a circle and did a prayer over it and then sacrificed and then let the blood drain off of it. They beat that cow. They, they took that cow. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. They took the cow, put a gun, a, a, a nail gun, smoothed him out, or put, probably did electric shock to the, to the cow. So when the cow died, when the bull died, they died in a straight frozen shock moment. And that shocking moment is frozen within the blood cell of the animal. And nothing beautiful was said over that animal before you did it. So the blood and the tissue that you eat when you eat that animal gonna go straight into you. What about fish? Fish? I mean, hey, I eat fish. I'm not gonna play hypocrite. No, I'm I eat fish. What about fish? The water. There's certain waters that are hey, the mercury in the water and the, and the cloning they doing the salmon. Sister Zakia, stay on us about that. The cloning that they doing the fish. The mercury in the water gets it to us. I mean, what about killing the fish, though? Like, I mean, is there's a, there's a, listen, there's a difference with fish and all the other animals. 
the amount of mass that's inside of a fish and the texture of fish meat is 10 times different than the texture and the amount of fat build up in all the other animals. We come from fishing villages on the west coast of Africa. The water is the issue of many, most of the time it's the water and how the fish are being caught. And how long it's been sitting. <clears throat> that's the real issue with fish. I mean, but like when you, when you kill the fish. You, if you notice, most fish are captured in the most peaceful manner. Remember, water deals with what? Passivity. Any living thing, of course, has blood, is gonna feel pain. I'm not going to say that that's not true. But look at the nature behind fishing and many other forms of gathering animals to eat. It's the least, they throw a net. Net is pulled up, right? How much death is going on? Versus when you take all the other animals and you kill them and then you serve them on a plate. And there's a lot more, there's a lot more fat, there's a lot more blood, there's a lot more pain. I mean, think about it. A cow is a mammal animal. It has breasts. It lactates. It gives birth to children. And now you're going to eat it and feed not only the baby to your own babies, but you're going to feed the milk of that animal to your baby also when you, as a warm-blooded being, organism, creature, walking on two feet, have your own milk and have your own body. Y'all with me? Y'all comprehending what I'm saying? So we got to move towards a, a more plant-based uh, diet right now. People who are not connected to soil, who don't, who don't connect to the land, who don't put seed in soil, have marital problems. Men, particularly, because they have, not, they have been away from the soil for so long, have a different respect for the female, uh, female gender. Here's what planting a seed entails. When you plant a seed, first thing you do is that you commune with the soil. I want the brothers to hear this. I want this. This is our science. Understand, this is supreme God science right here. When you touch soil and commune, you can tell what that, where that soil can go if you really just pay her some attention. Go ahead, brother. Are you feeling me? <laughs> Because the soil is your, not just your wife, soil is your mother, right? Then you have the thoughts, the ideas, the emotions that go on between you two, which is really what? One. Are you with me? And you have the seed. And the thumb point, you take your thumb and you press that hole. <laughs> Then you find out how deep she really is. <laughs> and how comfortable, how beautiful life really is. But then, see, and that's the good part. Everybody loves that part. <laughs> Are you with me? We can have fun with this. This doesn't have to be like no excruciating, painful thunder and lightning coming down on the sky type, you know, lecture. Then you take, listen very carefully, because your mind is like soil. Your mind is soil. Your heart is soil. Your body is soil. Your mind is a womb. Your heart is a womb. I didn't say wound. I said womb. And as you interact and you're having discourse, intercourse with yourself, with the soil, right? You plant the seed within the, the blackness, not darkness, the blackness of the soil. How you plant, when you plant, how you plant, but even deeper, when you plant, is the difference between life and death. So that lets you comprehend that the soil operates under magnetic cosmic principles, life principles. The moon, the tides of the water, the vibration and energy coming from the sun. So knowing when to do something, not just doing something. So now you don't have to rush the process, the process young man. She'll open up naturally. <laughs> and give birth naturally for you if you don't try to speed up the process. Commune first. And as you commune on the soil, in the soil, you make salatu, 
you go do dua over the soil, over the land, so you understand, comprehend, understand how much that soil can reproduce for you. You see the difference now? This is the ancient way you interact with nature, Nataro. Nataro. This is, a, this is the way you interact with that which gives birth to you. Then you cover it back over to protect the baby, to protect the seed, to protect the thought. You put it in that supreme blackness and you guard it. And if you notice, you even, if it's land, you put a gate around it, meaning you are working now as defense. 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 <laughs> right? Keep the move. But you can't just leave the seed there. Because you got to give the seed some wisdom. And the wisdom is what? Water. Some thoughts to help it flow and grow and give that body nu nu uh, nourishment. To give that body warmth. To give that body fluidity. So it can begin to form. That's the water that you sit in for nine what? Nine months. Are you with me? That's the nine months it takes for your thoughts to gravitate till it's a full entire project. Peace and blessings, sister. Then after that, 28 days, eight moon cycles, the thought comes, the thought is built up inside the blackness of your mind. And you give it, you give it action, life, when you speak and live and move. That's called moving and planning based upon what? Moon cycles. Everybody loves wearing a moon, a star, a crescent, and over, 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 whatever. Tell me what the sacredness of these symbols are. Were they just play games? Were they just toys? Well, our ancestors created all these symbols and great glyphs and stuff on the wall because it was just something pretty. How important is she? Everything depends on her. They can say whatever they want. Everything depends on her. And at that time, in the womb, in the temple of Yah, Asasiya, Yeduru, in the temple of the earth gods, life begins to form with the cultivation of water. Then you bring on the other aspect. Knowledge, light, sunlight, electromagnetic energy ignites and the minerals of that wisdom, the minerals of that pastime energy that builds up in the soil, when the minerals get hot, electromagnetism starts. Start activating the actual cells within the seed itself. Then it starts to take on form and energy from the minerals and begins to build itself up out of the soil. But see, something happens in niggerdom. And niggerdom caused by unnatural thought and unnatural people and unnatural practices. You don't come to check on your seed no more. You forget that the seed is there. Matter of fact, the land shows me how we think. The land shows us how we think. Because you leave her what? What do you do with the land, people in this country? You leave the land abandoned. And if you leave land abandoned, that means you probably leave women abandoned. Brother, you see. Are we winning? Are you seeing it now? Brother, oh my God. We left the land abandoned and they said the kids grew up like what? Weeds. The children growing like what? Weeds. Well, hey, guess what? Stop knocking the weeds because the weeds seem to be very strong to me. Because they keep on what? The weeds keep on growing. Regardless. Because that's in their genetic program. But you didn't come and check on them. So when he grows all wacky, when she grows all wacky, you say, something wrong with them. No, something wrong with who? You! Because you didn't check on the seed that you planted. Mm. <laughs> and you left the land abandoned. And the bad, bad thing about it is after leaving yourself abandoned, you get mad when somebody else comes up and take the what? Can someone else come up and take the land? And then you say, well, why are they going with this one? Why does this happen with this one? Why are these foreigners coming up on my land? Because Negro, you didn't protect it. You don't protect her. So everybody jumps inside of her and plant their seeds like they want to. 
symbolism between soil and land, but it's not symbolism. It is right and exact. Nothing in nature is separate. This lack of reverence for nature is the same as the lack of reverence for women. The lack of reverence for women is the lack of reverence for nature, which means there's a lack of reverence for our sons and our daughters. He, them, both. Which is why it says in the scripture, we created them. It doesn't say he. It said what? Them. It's a deep world. It's a deep plan. It's a deep plan. And, it's, and it doesn't fail. The plans of the creator don't fail. The plans of men fail. The plans of the creator doesn't fail. And when man moves in the master plan of the creator, then perfection is obtained. You can tell when somebody cares, look at the soil. Me and the sister had a chance. We've been doing some gardening. And it's interesting how when the certain people were no longer present in a certain place, I went back into their into their celestial mind, in their terrestrial mind. When you go to a place where a person has been already, who passed away, and you spend some time there fixing and cleaning, you start to figure out what was in, if you're a scientist, you can figure out what was in the mind state of the person working and what they were doing. And I, I you know, I bust through the weeds and I bust through the soil and I stayed there from night, from sun up to sundown. And as I started to move, move more and more and more around, I said, wow, this is interesting. This had nothing to, this place and this, this land can produce everything. It was just not showing any love. Like the womb, like our mothers and our fathers, they're not showing any love. And we're abandoning the tools of our spirit, our consciousness. The hammer. The hammer is the tool that is used to put things in proper place. The hoe. <laughs> Not, and I ain't talking about that one. <laughs> the hoe. I'm going to pick my seeds and bring them here. Go ahead and get them. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, ma'am. And the hoe, which is used to get to the bottom of the soil so that it can turn, so it can change the conditions because the earth and its conditioning has caused something to happen to her. So she needs to be what? She needs to be turned around. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? The compass for the compassion. The square for the truth. Measuring this thing up and putting things in its proper perspective. How beautiful is it? How beautiful is it to get our tools back? So, natural governance. Because there's already a program inside of the cellular memory of every living person. This is a script, and this script has been rewritten many a times, and it was rewritten in 1610, 1611, 1612. It is a collection of ancient, more older books full of symbols. I do not want anyone watching this to think that I am proselytizing religion. I am a theosophist, I am a spiritualist, I am a naturalist. I am using this book from our ancestral scrolls that's been left over to connect you to the symbols. So when you read this, you're getting proper interpretation. You have to become symbol literate to read these books. Symbol illiteracy is no excuse. Our people have been taught so much garbage. Time's up. We're going in. I'm going to read this for the crowd and the people that are watching. Revelation. The term apocalypse, which is where we get the word revelation, this was written in Greek, derived directly from the Greek word meaning divine revelation. Presumably about the end of history or time as we know it. Listen to that. Listen to that. Presumably about the end of his story as we have known it. <laughs> Are we together? When an entirely new order is ushered in. I'm reading the King James edition, African edition. While the apocalypse of Yachanan John closes the Bible, it does so in a matter that has for centuries perplexed many within Christianity. 
The extensive symbolism and apparent predictions of the end have inspired elaborate speculation and much misinterpretation. I want to put a footnote. There's a foot. There's footnotes in here, and I want to read it. I'm not going to read all of this because it'll take me eons. But there's something interesting in the first chapter of the Book of Revelation. Thank you. It says, this is the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. See, we missed it. Did you just check what I did? These people read this book all the time, but this should let you know if they really believe in this like they say they do. Right? This, I'll read it again. First chapter. The revelation of who? Yahshua. Who they, call, who they call in the Greek Jesus in the script the symbol character in the script this is the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach which Yah gave unto him so whose book is this really in the Bible in the script it will be Yahshua's so this is what he's seen and this is the dream also so now people are communicating with dreams oh, so we doing dream work <laughs> Are we doing dream work? I thought dream work was evil. I thought dream work was, was anti-Christian. Seem like some revelations are coming forward, aren't they? Everybody's not going to get this. But for those who get this today, I hope you are fulfilled in it. The revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach, which Yah gave unto him to show unto his servants, Things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by a angel messenger unto his servant John Yachemi. So these words are, are supposed to be the revelation of Yahshua given unto Yachemi, John. So when I'm reading it, I'm, this is not my words. This is supposed to be a revelation of Christ. Hmm. Changes the whole view of the book of Revelation, doesn't it? when it's properly presented according to what it says and not what I want it to say, like most people teach. A difference between denotation and connotation, thank you very much. Okay, let's go forward. Can't get stuck there. Revelation 8. Oh no, excuse me, go back to, I'm going into Revelations now 21 and then we'll go back to Revelation 8. Because Revelation 21 shows what's happening. Revelation 8 is going to show what's going on right now. This book, some people say, are saying, is this book a blueprint to, to know what's going on? Is it an actual, is it a rule book that they are going by step by step and planning world events? Right? Which one is it? It's a little bit of both, and I'll show you why. Because astrotheology is the oldest art on the planet. Learning about how Earth interacts with man, God and goddess on the planet, is the oldest art form on the planet. Getting guidance and signs, ayats, soras, from the Creator on what to do on planet Earth is an ancient science. That's astrotheology using the symbols and the connection to the stars with the symbols of the creator and the forces to give guidance is the oldest science. The reason why everybody's confused about God and creators and angels and everything else is because there's people blocking knowledge and information from other people and putting false ass gods and demons and spookism in between you and what's really being communicated based on racism, who cares? What you feeling? The feelings must stop. Brothers can put on go, put on chains with Jesus crosses on it and goes murdering each other in the street. So how deep is your religion? Cats can put on all types of religious paraphernalia and walk around and still be the deepest damn murderer ever known. So how deep are their belief systems? Maybe if they got to the core of what they were really looking at, they wouldn't act the way they act. Y'all with me? So I had it like that. I know, I know that I'm going up against the grain by revealing symbols to people. I have to reveal it. 
It wouldn't be right not to. It says that that blood will be required at your hand for not telling your brother the truth. That's right. The ancestors left. Yes, ma'am. Revelations 21. Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven. Shamayim. I seen a new heaven. That means I see a new sky. I seen a new environment. I seen new constellation alignments. And I saw a new earth, a new Tara, a new Tara, a new environment, so terrestrial physical place. For the first sky, the first firmament has passed away. The first earth, the first alignment has gone already. And there was no more sea. And the old waterways and the old watercourses have changed. And I, Yachanan, saw the holy city. Stop. The holy city. Now, what is a city? A city is an environment. An environment that's going to be inhabited by what? People, living souls. So I've seen a new environment. I've seen a new type of place because we have a new what? A new celestial terrestrial alignment. So you can't think the same way forever. You can't act the same way forever. When the earth shifts, you got to shift. And it's about to get a lot hotter than it is right now. You want to know why we are stuck. Because we are being stuck in a frozen environment. Want a baby carrot? Want a baby carrot from a plastic bag? A baby carrot from a plastic bag. Oh, how, how great is that going to do my system? How you doing, brother? Peace. You feel where I'm coming from? You want some juice? Can I give you some juice? Ten percent juice. Ah, I'm, I'm guilty as all. Get back. That's the price of living here. Here, want some juice? I give you ten percent juice, and then I give the rest of it as artificial color, and I put some, some not even sucrose. What the, I put some dextrose in the water. I put some some syrup in the water, and I let you drink it and give you the illusion that you have pineapple juice. Damn, really messed up. They don't want to know why I act artificial, because my food is artificial. My sex been artificial. My religion has been artificial. So I'm going to act artificial. But what happens when the human soul, or the living soul, the cosmic part of your being, can't take it anymore? Then you start doing what? You start questioning. Something inside of you says, something not right. Some people get erratic and start fighting. Some people start screaming. Some people do different things. But something inside says something is what? Something's wrong. So then nature is calling for a change, and that's what you start to see is what? Revolution. And the revolution actually is a byproduct, byproduct of the internal what? Revelation. America need not be scared. All America needs is a new revelation. What the world needs right now is a what? A new revelation. And that new revelation is basically your health and your consciousness is being created by your interactions with your environment. Who the hell gives a damn about a terrorist? You're creating a terrorist by the environment. You're creating a terrorist by your belief systems. You're creating terrorists through your economic practices. You're creating terrorism through racism. And the greatest person as the terrorist is the one who wants to control the damn bank of the people. So who the hell is the first one to go? I'm sorry, y'all. I just got to give it to you straight. I saw a new what? Heaven and a new earth. Meaning there's a whole new alignment going on. When those star systems begin to shift, remember, as the moon, the moon shifts with the star constellations, correct? The moon has an effect upon the waters and the tides and the magnetism of the body. So that means the cells start to spin different, then that means the way you feel is going to start to be what? Different. So you're going to be forced to change whether you want to or not. And it's best to recognize the galactic cosmic change that's going on between the sky and your DNA on the planet now than to wait. But see, living inside of encapsulated cities, keep us from not, not realizing how much nature is giving and sending and signals. Are, you, are we cool? Am I all right on time? I need, to, I need to take this home first. So once we get this, then you'll comprehend the rest of the teaching. In this particular one, it goes on, I'm going to skip down. 
But it says this. And the third part of, of the creatures which were in the sea had like God, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it was fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. Skipping down. And fourth angel sounded, and third part of the sun was smitten, a third part of the moon, a third part of the stars, a third part of them was darkened. A third of everything, a third of the land, a third of the, of the creatures, a third of the soil was destroyed. Now, this actually happened. Textbook, science textbook. I'm going to court. So when I say something, I bring what? The text. I want you to hear what's happening with the soil. A third of all the land on the earth is actually being destroyed by human activity. We all together? We still cool? We still here? Where we at? Let me know. Are you out there? All right. I'm going to read this real fast. I'm not going to read it too fast. Here it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Building a good soil is a slow process. Under the circumstances, good topsoil accumulates at a rate of about 10 tons per hectare, 2.5 acres per year. Enough soil to make a layer about one millimeter deep when spread over a hectare. Under poor conditions, it can take thousands of years to build that much soil. The changing of the ages. Perhaps one third to let me say it again. Black and white, and I'm going to pass the book around. Perhaps one third to one half of the world's current croplands are losing topsoil faster than it is being replaced. In some of the worst spots, erosion carries about 2.5 centimeters, one inch of topsoil per year. With losses like that, agricultural production has already begun to fall in many areas. That means a lot of people won't be eating, won't they? Or will not be, excuse me. And that's not my writing. One third of the earth's soil is what? Being depleted, which correlates right to Revelation 8. One third of all creatures in creation and in nature will suffer. These are earth changes, and many of these earth changes are being organized by the folly and ignorance and negligence of man. No place for racism now, is it? Yes, I will be doing some African work on the soil. Yes, I will be doing my Native American magic on the soil. I will be doing my Yoruba magic on soil, because a lot of people got to what? Survive. A lot of people got to eat. No one wants to hear that they can't eat anymore. And what do you think you've been eating? Crap. Sorry, I gotta say it like this. But I have to. Now, that's Revelation 8. We all still together? It's feeling good. I just gotta get this, this gotta come out. It's because this is a this is a revelation I've been wanting, a message that I've been wanting to give for a long time. And it's so much, but I have to speed up because we we only we have a what? Short time left. The devil comes to what? To fool the whole world. The devil comes, this, this Luciferian, or should I say actually to put it in proper terms, this satanic being, this adverse, this adverse being, the word shaitan, shaitan, the word Satan, Shaitan means adversary. This adversary knows that they have a short time what? Left to deceive what? The whole world. So with that being said, me, you, we, us, we got a short time to deal with getting many of our brothers and sisters the knowledge on what it is to do on this planet for themselves and their family. And the first thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to recognize those in internal powers and those internal talents because those are the powers and the energies given by the creator that is not dependent on anybody and when you depend on that 
you are never powerless. You become powerless when you depend on something that is not eternal. You become powerless when you depend on something that's less eternal and eternal and infinite than you are. Can you imagine if I was a teacher right now? What a sin would it would be, wouldn't it? Somebody needs to hear this. I need to do it so I don't snap because I have a power to do it. It's my joy to break down scripture, symbols, and signs. It's my job. It's a natural thing. It, is, it doesn't take a lot for me. I have to do it. And just like each one of us, we have something natural given to us. So going into 1 Corinthians, is it chapter 12? Because I, I, I took them off the board. I just want to line all the scriptures up so you can see it. So when, they, when, you, when you leave out of here, they say, oh, that brother was teaching some praise. I say, no, I actually was breaking down these scriptures proper, right and exact. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. I remember now. We, we good? I'm all, you know, I'm, I'm just seeing if everybody's good. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 4, starting from verse 4. Starting from verse 1, skipping over then to verse 4. Excuse me. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. That's the first verse. That's the first statement and the first verse. Now concerning spiritual gifts, gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. It's going over to verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration but the same what? Lord, the same creator. We're not talking about no landlord either. We're just talking about the creator. And there are diversities of operation but the same creator which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning the spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one and self same spirit, dividing every man severely as he will. Each one of you got a gift. That's the first economy. So when someone says, you're very talented, you got to take that back into the old English. We deal with etymology in here, y'all know that. And they call it a talent search. <laughs> Has a whole different feeling and meaning now, don't it? When somebody tells you, we're going on a talent search. America top, America's top idol, idol, excuse me, tell you some water probably, that's what that's, that's, that's about. America's top idol, top idol, they're looking for the most talented person or most talented people or who can use their voice to persuade people to buy into bullshit. So I got to find the most talented singer I can to have you sign your life away and your, and your emotions away to some product, talent. And they want to create idols. So now they want people to use their talent. What is a talent? What is talent? <coughs> talent is wealth created. It's, it's, let, me, let me take that back. A, a talent. A ability or gift that produces wealth that is usually inherent. If it's inherent, that means it's uh, as what? It's already in you. It's hereditary. Oh, let's go there. Inherent? Did I just say inherent? Did I say in her instance? 
Did I just say her woman? Readily? And her? You see, the biggest secret I always tell people of, 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 of nations of power, of, of societies of power, is that most empowered society reverence women. Not because they're trying to be feminine and no oh, no I'm not a, I'm, I don't I don't want to be a feminine dude or macho whatever whatever nigga shut up. Excuse me. Because it's within her that cultivations happen. Dream time and dreamscape. Words and communications happening within her, and when she's holding that, whether it's physical or not, even gotta understand something: the smell, the beauty, and the love of a woman. I don't care who she is. When she holds a child, male and female, them that that cultivational power activates the inner intelligence within the person, so that when they are growing from the soil, we back there again. They come up strong and know who they are and don't have a problem. Why are you leaving out of the garden? Who told you it was bad to be in the garden? Who told you to be ashamed from being in the garden? Who told you you to be ashamed? Adam was supposed to eat the fruit. I tell people this all the time. You better thank God she did. Your ass wouldn't be here. She ate the fruit and then went to Adam and said, the serpent told me to eat the fruit. And he gave it to Adam and Adam said, mm. And they got down. And then the ancient being came amongst them and said, who told you you were this and this and that? He said, we ate off the tree. He said, okay, in this hour, you." Sh he said, not only will you till the land and grain the land, but he said, your eyes are what? Open like ours. You have become like one of who? Us. Meaning you are going into your God state. So the whole interpretation of women being the cause of evil and bullshit and religion is stupid. Because the serpent that she got in contact with was her kundalini, which was her backbone, which was her spine. Meaning she made Adam have an erection. And then he got in tune with the serpent. And then those two serpents interacted and created life, which is the DNA helix. Are you with me? So this being born and this born and sin shit got to stop. Cause then you're contradicting God. Don't make sense. It's just poop bull crap. God is all perfect. So what the hell is creation? Excuse my French. Or Swahili. Whatever. It's sad because you know, because people walk around with this mentality. And it causes sicknesses. Yeah. It causes all types of disbalancement between our family members. And we start treating each other like crap. Yeah. And then we say, what's going on? Well, you took your mother and you put her at the bottom of your foot. And that's impossible. I've never heard such a thing. A person that can hold you and breathe life into you, hi -ya, right? Is now a person that you regard as the reason why every damn thing in the world is wrong. Your theology already got you fucked up. I'm sorry, I gotta give it raw today to the people in the world. Everybody else gets street. Yeah, how about street that one? The woman you love, you say is beneath you. But if she's beneath you, then your children is nothing. Come on, we gotta deal with some deductive reasoning with this stuff, y'all. This is not, it's not adding up no more. If it don't add up, it got to what? Go. That's what's holding us back. A ability or what? Gift that produces wealth that is usually inherent or is dealing with your heredity. You all have spiritual gifts. You all have internal gifts. Are we together on this? Come on, give me something. Do I have a witness? A shadow? A shadow like in the hat law. I mean, do, do, I, do anybody bear witness to what I'm saying here? Because I'll I, I flop down and, and say, good night, put my head back. Like, you know me. I stay up for hours with this. I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning getting my, my things prepared to speak. 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. So 
I'll go on. I'll be like, man, I go on for hours. I say each scripture has a science encoded in it. A lesson that's not being given. It's the real in, it's the real inner teaching of these scriptures. Moving on. So we got this. We understand what a talent is. We understand what 1 Corinthians was talking about. A spiritual gift cannot be taken from you. Therefore, there is no, there is no time where you are living in what? Poverty. Poverty is when you get disconnected from the Creator. Poverty is when you get disconnected from nature. There's never a time when you're in poverty. Are we clear on that? Time to go into one of my favorites. You know where I'm going. I am going to go to Job 5, but I ain't going to go to Not yet. Because I got a pair of, but before we get to Job 5, I got to go to Matthew. They look at the 5 be coming high, don't it? Yeah, the 5 percent is in the house. But anyway, the 5 is very powerful. <laughs> All right? Matthew 25. Let's go there. Matthew 25 is the parable of the talents. I know some of you have heard this before. Right? But the way what I'm about to reveal is the new economy. The sustainable economy. And the sustainable economy, there is no one, Matthew 25, verse 14, go straight there. Can I erase this? Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. Y'all gonna start bringing us y'all scripts here, man. This is our Shakespearean. Y'all gonna bring y'all Shakespearean scientific scripts here. Grandma loved it. Grandpa loved it. We gonna start. Y'all gonna start bringing them. So I stop. I can. I can stop screaming out loud from here, and y'all can read along with me. And I can stop reading. Somebody else can read. Thank you. Ma'am and mom is the same word, too. Ma'am and mom is the same word. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> Here we go. Matthew 25, verse 14 through 20. 14 starts as the parable of talents. And also understand that in Old English, the word talent in Old English meant money. It meant currency. A talent, if somebody gave you a talent, it was currency. So your talent is your what? Currency. All right? So nobody, so you, you are never without. You are in a, always in an extreme existence. Beautiful extreme existence, I have to preference. Of abundance. You're never without. Embrace the, the, the minute you embrace yourself is the minute you have embraced abundance. I'm not talking about no false abundance. I'm not talking about I want fancy clothes, I want fancy cars. Those are all things you can have. That's easy. Excuse me, excuse me. I have to, can I talk? Can I be me for a moment? No inquisition? Can I go ahead and give it to your street? Make it plain. Give it street. You can always have that shit. You can always get clothes and cars and jobs and, and whatever. Those things are all, you can get that. That's Go ahead. It's not a question about can you get it. The question is can you maintain it. The question is does it really get to the core of your survival? Because if you don't have it, will you still be successful? Peace and blessings. Come on in, family. I got a chair for you. Yes, thank you. You can move around too. If you don't have these things. Will you still be successful? And you say, of course, right? Because things are only the manifestation of what you use and what you need. Things, that's all things are. A car is only as good as the service that it what? Renders to you. But does it make you? Because man invented cars, right? A diamond. 
A lot of people like to talk about bling, bling, bling. A diamond is the most worthless rock on the planet. I won't keep it a hundred with you. Unless you are a glass cutter, unless you're gonna make some lasers, unless you're gonna do some telecommunications, or unless you're gonna do some, some, some crystal magic and shit, a diamond is worthless. It don't mean jack diddly. It only means something to other people who know what to do with it. This. Maybe we like people who don't have a connection to their environment. Maybe poverty has just become a way of life and that African, Moor, Black, whatever name you want to use, has become synonymous with poverty. You say poor, you say ghetto, the first thing a person thinks is what? Negroes, black folk, whatever term you want to use. He wants to fight about names. Waste of time. Same condition. Children still going through the same crap. Some of the people that want to get into name games and, oh, brother, you off the wall with that talking Africa stuff. I say, yeah, but I bet you if I go down the street and go to the public school, that's your damn family members in there being given a, uh, uh, <laughs> an inferior education. Sitting there talking about some, some, some damn George Washington Carver and Albert Einstein. George Washington Carver, of course, black man. But, George, but they know more about George Washington than they know about what? George Washington Carver. What did George Washington do for America? Not a damn thing. But what did George Washington Carver do? Save the whole entire country and planet. Because America was on the verge of famine and death. See? Besides the black girl saving George Washington's life. Uh, yeah. Deep, isn't it? Black and gold. 